The name Perkins, carved in stone, below a Gothic tower, a boy navigates with a cane. A title, Inclusive Education Strategies in Brazil, with Ana Lucia Rago. I am a physical therapist, and but I, uh, I started working with children with low vision, uh, with or without additional disability, at the hospital in a health. Uh, area. But then I realized it, that I couldn't be only at the hospital because the things that I were that I was working there should go to other places. So I started working with the family, the first thing that I thought. And then because I started working with the babies. And then the babies were growing up. So I, I, I thought, well, I have to, to go to the schools now to work with them because I cannot just stay here in my, in my room. So I started working with the schools and, and then we, just with the schools that uh, have children that were uh, attended at the hospital. Mm -hmm. But then I start uh, listening from the educators, no, you have to to go to uh, to talk and to teach all the all the schools because it's very important for us. And then I, I thought they are right because if I do that, I can I can uh, train teachers that that have or that will have some child with spe special need in his class in his or her classroom and then i i started to 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 look for support to do the seminars to support the schools there is a law uh, it's m maybe the law exists uh, for 10 years i think and uh, just because of the law the inclusion it starts started happening. So uh, the law is, is very important for us, but uh, at the same time, we have the law, but we don't have actions from the government that can make the law works, you know? So, uh, and, and, and here is when the, the non-governmental -govern uh, services uh, or institutions are working. We are, we are trying to help the government to prepare the, uh, the situations and the, uh, the, the schools, everything to, to, be, to, to do the inclusion. Fade to black. A graphic of the Perkins logo swoops across the screen revealing a chapter heading. Inclusion starts at home. We want the family to uh, understand that the inclusion begins in the family and at home. So when we work with them and uh, talking about uh, inclusion, we are also visit visiting the home and trying to find together uh, strategies that can give to the child the opportunity to participate in the daily living uh, activities. And, and after that, they can, when they can see that the child can really participate and do things, uh, so uh, after that they can help us better with the school. In a photograph, we see a mother preparing to send her adolescent son to school for the day. The boy is multiply disabled and sits in a padded high back chair that provides support. The parents are aware, but at the same time, they are, um, most of them are not so strong to fight for their, for the child rights, you know? So we, when we work with uh, supporting the inclusion, we also work with the family. So actually we start uh, we start working with the family and say them 
uh, your child can learn and uh, we can show that with activities and you can help us in and the school in this process so it's very important to to have them with us fade to black creating an inclusive environment we try to um, first i think we try to to get everybody involved in the process so the the child with a special need is not uh, a responsibility only of the teacher. So all the school community has to be involved in this process and mainly the director of the school and the coordination. Uh, otherwise the, the, the teacher feels lonely and, and without tools to help the child. So we try to, to get everybody involved in this process. This is one step. And um, then when we are there uh, to, to watch the child and to know the reality of the school and the routine and the strategies they use, the materials, everything, when we have the meeting, the feedback meeting, we try to discuss uh, the situations that we, that we observed and we try to, to make them to find solutions. So because uh, I, I, um, we always say to them, I'm not here to, I, I'm not the solution. Yeah, I'm not here to give miraculous uh, solutions. I don't have them. <laughs> and I, uh, I'm here to, to build uh, something together. So everybody wants, needs to be involved and thinking and, and uh, giving ideas. So th this is one of our strategies. In a photograph we see four mothers whose children are either visually impaired or multiply disabled. They are attending a meeting at school. They sit in four chairs facing the camera and each has a folder of materials which have been provided to them by a teacher and a trainer who stand behind the women in the photograph. And uh, it's so nice to see when they, they learn to listen to each other, the, the family and the school, the coordination and the teacher. It's so nice because when they start listening to each other, they, they start also uh, working together and finding answers. Fade to black. Teaching the teachers. Well, um, we, we start um, trying to make them uh, to, to make a reflection uh, about of the impact of the, the deficiency in the learning process. Because usually we don't stop to think uh, what's my vision important for, or my hearing or my movements. So we try to, to start with this. Let's, let's think uh, if I, and they can try with, with uh, simulation glasses. Uh, so let's feel and let's think what, what's, what's my vis vision important for. And if I don't have it, what I'm missing from the environment, and the same for hearing or movements. And then with, with that, they can start um, understand, understanding the, the needs of the child, you know, because they had the experience. So this is one strategy. We see a photograph of a room full of teachers undergoing a training. In the foreground, one teacher wears a pair of goggles that simulates the vision of a person with severe visual impairment. The teacher holds a line drawing of a house quite close to her face in an attempt to recognize the shapes depicted. When we are read, uh, we're working with the inclusion, the child, watching the child at the classroom activities, 
uh, after the observation, we sit with the teacher and coordinator and family, and then we start uh, saying, okay, in the beginning, you, we go step by step, you know, the beginning you, you did this activity, and uh, let's think how Nathan, for example, participated on it, and how could, do you think he could do this better? Uh, yes, I think, and how? So what can we do? And we try to do it in a very concrete way, because uh, otherwise it's so uh, difficult for them to imagine the, the difficulties of the child and the, the strategy that we want them to use. Sometimes it's so abstract and they cannot understand and put into practice. So it's better when they can uh, be in, the, in that experience and then think about the child. Fade to black. Sharing experience, Nathan's story. So when we started with Nathan, he was already uh, in a preschool, and then we went there to ask permission to, to help, to try to help for, uh, and support the inclusion. And it was a very positive experience with this preschool. And then when, uh, this year, when he went to another school, because he went to the elementary school, we went, uh, we, we went there before him. <laughs> so we can talk to the, we could talk to the director and to the coordinator and, and present the project and say what were our goals with the project and to, uh, to prepare them a little bit. But we wait, Nathan arrive, uh, arrives to, and, and we give them a time to, to, to know him because it's important for, for, for the process. They have to, to have their own view of Nathan. So after that, we started with the the work really. For example, in this situation that uh, Nathan was sitting on his wheelchair and all the children were sitting on the floor. So when I saw that, I, I could observe that Nathan could not uh, make eye contact with her, with his colleagues, and he cannot follow the actions of his colleagues because he was in a higher position. Uh, so when we had the feedback meeting, we, we talked to, to the teacher about that. And, and, and she had the solution. Oh, so maybe I can put everybody in, in, on chairs. Yes, that will be great. And then she did that in the next day because she's very fast. She was very fast, this teacher. In a photograph, we see a classroom full of children. Natan sits in his wheelchair under a window, and on either side of him, his classmates, who previously sat cross-legged on the floor, are now on chairs that bring them closer to his height. And it was much better because they were all at the same level, so they could connect better and talk to each other better, and the colleagues were more uh, uh, close to Natan and talking to him and helping him or showing, pointing and showing things to him. So the, the interaction was better. The, the thing that I saw that it's, it's, it's most important is to work with concrete examples. Uh, because if we just talk about inclusion, about children with special needs, it's too abstract for people, you know? So when we have the example there and we work on it, it's much better, I think. We, we say children learn with concrete experience and we also learn with concrete experience. So it's very important. I think this is the strategy that better work, have a concrete 
situation and learn from that. Fade to black. The benefits of inclusive strategies. One thing is that uh, the strategies can work to manage different children. And also that uh, sometimes when we say, we suggest to the teacher, oh, you can do a different calendar, for example, with high contrast, and, and uh, it's good to make them aware that uh, some materials or some strategies of teaching are good for everyone, not just for that child that has a special need, but will benefit everybody uh, in the classroom. And uh, so this is uh, important for them to know because they, sometimes they are like, oh, I, I cannot um, leave my own strategies and go to another one. This is insecure, in, it's an insecurity way, you know, leave wha what I know, I already know, and go to do to a new thing. And, uh, and then they, they can see that that new thing or that new strategy can help everybody. So it's, it's very positive. In a photograph, we see a large calendar for the month of August 2011. The background is bright yellow. The days of the week are printed in black ink on white paper and are posted across the top of the calendar within a black rectangle, providing even more contrast. The days are represented by small squares of various colors of paper, which have a large number printed on them corresponding to the date. The students can place them within the calendar grid using Velcro. When I say that, that the school is understanding all the needs of that child and they already know uh, the adaptations of materials, activities, and, uh, and the resources they can use with the child, uh, I feel, okay, it's going uh, fine. It's going well, and then, uh, but the point, I think the point is when I can see the, the team of the school finding solutions, and this is the point I say, okay, now I can start leaving them because they are, they are already, they, they know the child, they can see what he or she needs, and they can find solutions by themselves. So when I s see the school in that point, I think, okay, now I can go to another run. Fade to black. Building capacity for inclusive education. Okay, so from the gov government, we need to, uh, uh, we, we try to, Actually, we, we are trying to help them to train, to train the, the educators because this is a need for them and for, for us also as a society. I think the universities are, are becoming aware that they have to prepare uh, teachers to the special education and to the inclusion and I can see that there are more people getting interested on it and um, also I can see on the public schools the teachers that are, are already working with that in the beginning like seven or eight years ago the, the teachers were almost always saying no I cannot do that it's so difficult, so hard. I know nothing about this. I cannot do. And now I can see uh, a change. They, they say, okay, I have this child. I, I know nothing about that, but I want to help him to learn. I want to teach him. I want to learn how to teach him. Uh, so I, I am very happy when I listen to, to that and I, I am listening more and more and during the seminars I can hear, I can listen to different 
uh, people uh, telling some experience, sharing experiences, you know. So it's, it's good to, to see that the teachers are getting involved and are, are uh, av available to, to try to promote the inclusion. In a photograph, we see two young girls, students, working closely together at a desk. One girl, with curly brown hair, leans over and confers with her classmate, who has albinism. The girl with albinism wears thick glasses and leans close to the assignment page on which they are working. It's a challenge to, to make the inclusion, the, the responsible inclusion, anywhere. But when you, we don't have money and knowledge and those things, it's a big challenge, I think. But I, I think we are going forward. We are, uh, uh, we are walking, you know, in some way. So that's important. The project for teacher training in inclusion was made possible by the Lavelle Fund for the Blind through a grant to Perkins.